live your life the way that you want to leave your life. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak to you right now, if you had 90 days to live, how many of you will make some radical changes in your life? And most people raise their hands. And then you take a poll, and what the majority of them will say, I will quit my job. Hmm. Why? Because that's not them. They're not doing something that's them. You spend 40 to 60 hours a week doing something that's not you. Yeah. That's stressful. But if you're doing something that's you, that's your passion. And so when you realize that we have a choice to accept life as it is or be an active force for good, to decide, I don't want to just survive. This is not me. What it takes to survive and what it takes to live, those are two totally different things. And you got to be willing to work for that. A lot of people are afraid of that four letter word. Willingness, W, the willingness to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. O, ownership of your life taking full responsibility for where you are. George Bernard Shaw said that, that people that make this life, they look around for the circumstances they want and if they can't find them, they create them. The R stands for willingness to reinvent yourself. To that, that in order for a man to gain his life, he must lose his life. So you've got to be willing to die to who you are now, to give birth to who you are to become. And the K stands for kindred spirits. You've got to come out from among people who don't have goals, who don't have dreams. People rub off on you. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. Academy Award winner Sidney Poitier said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. Either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? And so if people are willing to do the work, whosoever will, let him come. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Boom! <laughs> One of my favorite books is Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Franco. And he said he was in the Nazi German concentration camps. He said, the Jews that survived the inexpressible cruelties of Nazism had some power greater than themselves that they believed in, or some movement that they bought into, or some family member that they were determined to see again. And what it boiled down to, he said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow if you got a reason that drives you. My reason was I had made a commitment. I was going to buy my mother a home. And nothing was going to turn me around. I was going to make that happen. That was not some wish. My brothers and sisters, they didn't share it. They thought I was crazy. But that became my reason for being. I faced a lot of rejections. And I just saw it as a part of the process that you have to roll with the punches. Because I was in this place where Paul Robinson who said, here I stand for I can do no other. And I was determined that I was going to find a way through speaking to earn enough money that I'd be available to my mother to take care of her who was suffering from breast cancer. I promised her when I was a kid, I said, you will never go into a nursing home. She used to work in nursing homes. And she always said she never wanted to go into a nursing home. 
I said, I promise you, that will not be your destiny. And when my sister called me and said, Leslie, are you sitting down? I asked, what's wrong with mama? I just got reelected to the higher legislature. And they appointed me to the chairmanship of the education committee and the human resource committee. And she said, mama has breast cancer. I say, I'll be there tomorrow. She said, but you just got elected. I said, listen to me. I enjoy politics, but I love mama. And I promised her I'll be there. And she said, Leslie, they have a lot of good nursing homes in Dade County. I said, please, don't touch her. I'll be there tomorrow. I called a plane the next morning. And i never forget ringing the doorbell. And a friend of hers, the name is Mildred, was there. And she came to the door and she said, oh my God, Mamie, Leslie's here. And I could hear my mother say, I knew he would come. Hmm. I knew he would come. Mildred unpacked those box, boxes. He's here. Something that drives you when others give up and surrender and throw in the towel. Something that can cause you to reach a place within yourself where you say, I don't feel nowhere's time. I was there. I took care of her until she left here. Bought her home. Gotta find something that pulls you into the future. It's a stand that you decide to take with your life. If we if we look at the difference between what I do and what ministers do, ministers preach the gospel about Jesus. I preach the gospel that Jesus preached. <laughs> they sell the messenger, I sell his message. Boom. When they demanded of the Jewish carpenter, when the kingdom of God shall come, he said, he didn't talk about brick and mortar, some building, the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. They shall say, it's neither low there, low here, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You can't have a kingdom without a king. Kings rule. You must master the king in you. Most of us have been programmed most of us are being manipulated by the media, by computers. Studies indicate that most people look at their phone over 400 times a day. They've given up control, the real estate of their mind, the kingdom within, to commercial advertising. They've been programmed to be fans, to be spectators as opposed to being co-creators and how they're going to live their lives. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, the future belonged to those who created. We were born to create. And so this time where we are, this place where we are, mm -hmm. people should not be focused on the television set and what's going on in the Ukraine and my heart goes out to them and my prayers and my support for them. But they should be focused on what kind of person must I become that will help me to learn how to turn adversity to my advantage. Because life is going to always be challenging. Mm -hmm. Think it not strange that you're faced to fiery furnaces of this world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations. It's a part of the process. And so our goal is, is to master your kingdom. 
that, that we have to go within as we say that you don't live life as it is, you live life as you are. And so when, if we train our children how to live their lives from the inside out as opposed to the outside in, we can reduce the dropout rate, the suicide rate, the unexplained violent behavior, people fighting over toilet paper in a grocery store or fighting over a parking spot, that's somebody that's not in their right mind. And so people are breaking down to a very large extent. But the people that will make it through this place where we are, there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Uh, Shakespeare said, the fort dear Brutus is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. If, if people take the time, a minimum of two to three times a day, to get still, to get quiet, to go within, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee, and listen to the whispering of your soul. What am I supposed to do next? As opposed to listening to the world. Yeah. What you tune into, you turn into. So in this space, we have to focus on how to begin to elevate ourselves above the culture, above all the stuff that we see, and focus on the whole of vision of what we want to manifest. My favorite book says, I'll give you all your eyes can see. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. You might run over here, but you'll limp back. Don't mess with me. <laughs> we have to continue to educate people on the reality that you can make a difference. Politics is a part of it, but it's not the absolute. That we have to be actively engaged in being current in terms of our knowledge and skills because the whoever's in the White House, it doesn't matter. If you don't have the skill set and the mindset to turn adversity to your advantage or to find a way to get your piece of the pie, that's the name of the game. That there's a big pie out here and everybody want a piece of it, but everybody's not going to get a piece of it because the road to life is straight and narrow and, and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to do the inner work. Few there be that are willing to upgrade their skills and their knowledge. Few there be that will face rejections and no's day in and day out and decide it's not over until I win. And most people, they allow themselves to be broken. They will surrender. But you have got to have the kind of mindset no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. You're not going to stop me. I have a goal, I have a dream, and my stopping or giving up because of the failures, because of the, the rejections, that's a non-negotiable no. I'm coming at you from another angle and I'm not gonna stop till I get through. We all have that in us. We don't know how strong we are until we have to be strong. And so we're not taught in school resiliency. We're not taught how to handle rejection. That's why so many kids are committing suicide, being bullied, because they have a limited, weak sense of self. Dr. Um, Martin Silliman, who wrote the, the book of, called Psycho-Cybernetics, who discovered self-image, that we need to have a curriculum that builds a person's sense of identity. Once your life has a sense of identity, that gives your life a sense of purpose. And once your life has a sense of purpose, that gives your life a sense of direction. And so Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. When you know why you're here and what you're supposed to do with your life because of that time that you've taken to ask yourself some questions of why am I here? What's the meaning of my life? Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life, the day that you're born and the day that you realize why you're born. Most of us don't take the time to get quiet and get still. 
Most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65. Most people don't put their minds around the reality that life is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. Because you're, you're the living embodiment. I mean, you're literally a living legend who's destroyed a lot of reasons why you shouldn't succeed, why you shouldn't get ahead. You know, there, there's people out there right now, like, what, what am I supposed to do? They feel helpless. They feel isolated. They feel But they powerless. don't feel that in a vacuum. See, we, we were born to succeed. You're made in the likeness and image of God. It doesn't get any better than that. That's right. We were born to succeed. We begin with authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. But we've been programmed to fail. And so I say, particularly when I'm in church, even though we are made in the likeness and image of God and been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth, we will never exercise authority and dominion over our lives until we exercise authority and dominion over what we are not. Mm. <laughs> that we have bought into an image that has been sold to us. Dr. Carter G. Woodson said it best. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. He said, if you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. So our goal and objective in helping people to begin to plug into this economy is to deal with the pandemic that we presently have, but also the virus of mediocrity, HIV, hood infected virus, AIDS, <laughs> addiction to incarceration, and death syndrome.